240 RPM might be fine depending on the traverse rate, and 5 inches a minute might be fine depending on the RPM. RPM, traverse rate, really don't mean that much to me. What I'm more interested in is what percent of the wheel is doing the cutting and what percent of the wheel is doing the cleaning up. In traverse cylindrical grinding, basically we have two parts of the wheel. As the wheel traverses the workpiece, the front of the wheel is going to remove the material. That's the cutting part of the wheel. The back of the wheel is going to do the cleaning up or the finishing up or the finish grinding operation. What we want is a good ratio between these two. So what we want is maybe half the wheel to do the cutting operation and maybe half of the wheel to do the finishing operation. So we have to do a very simple calculation to determine what is that fraction. And that fraction is determined by this equation. What we take is the roughing width equals the traverse speed in inches per minute divided by the workpiece RPM. That gives us inches per revolution or inches that are actually doing the cutting. So in your case you're going at 5 inches a minute and you're going at 240 RPM so that gives you 0 0.02 inches per rev or 0 0.02 inches divided by a 2 inch wheel so 1% of your wheel is doing the cutting 99% of your wheel is doing the finishing up. That's just too small. If 1% of your wheel is doing the cutting you have a tiny little fraction over here that's doing all the work and then you've got 99% of the wheel doing very little work. So that 1% of the wheel right here is just taking a beating. He's removing a lot of material in a really short time. He's generating a lot of heat. He's wearing away very quickly. And he's probably generating grinding burn. So what we want is a ratio that's more reasonable. We want a ratio of, let's say, 50-50. We want half of the wheel to do the cutting. And we want half of the wheel to do the cleaning up. So let's choose some parameters that are more reasonable. If we use a workpiece speed of let's say 50 RPM and we increase our traverse speed from 5 inches a minute to 50 inches per minute, so we race across the wheel, that'll give us a fraction of 50% doing the cutting and 50% doing the rubbing. That's a much more reasonable value. 50% of the wheel doing the cutting, 50% of the wheel doing the rubbing. However, we've got one problem. We've got that 4 thou depth of cut. So if we're taking a 4 thou depth of cut over now half the wheel, those are, that's a really big material removal rate, and we're going to get very big forces. So what's the solution? Let's decrease that depth of cut from four thou to, let's say, a thou or half a thou. So now we're going to have that half a thou being removed by half the wheel, and it's not going to affect our cycle time, even though we're taking a smaller depth of cut. Because we're traversing so much faster that our philosophy now is, instead of taking a deep, slow cut and chewing the hell out of the front of our wheel, Let's take a very shallow, fast cut, back and forth, distribute those forces in that heat over a bigger area. That'll decrease our risk of grinding burn. It'll actually give us less wheel wear. And it'll give us a shorter cycle time. All by choosing the correct ratio between the roughing part of the wheel and the finishing part of the wheel. So what kind of values are reasonable? There's no magic number. Um, typically, I like to see maybe 50% of the wheel doing the cutting, 50% of the wheel doing the cleaning up. Maybe for roughing. For finishing, maybe we want 25% doing the cutting. Super finishing, maybe 12%. Somewhere in the ballpark. But we can say for certain that 1% is way too low. Let's get in around the 50% range, and we'll find that burn will go away, chatter will go away, wheel doling will go away and we'll have a lot fewer problems if we do